So our next presenter is Nacho Tu, right? He goes by Nacho. And he, uh, he is the lead data scientist at the Center for Advanced Transportation Technology Laboratory, CAT Lab at UMD, where uh, he is developing and improving online transportation analysis tools and visualization. Nacho uh, earned his bachelor degrees in fi finance and economics from the UMD, and his master in analytics from Villanova University. So uh, he and Michael is going to swap. He is going to present uh, the pro vehicle data for arterial performance monitoring. Okay, Nacho, all yours. All right, thank you. So today I'll be presenting on some visualizations for arterial performance monitoring, uh, specifically using XD probe data. So just a quick recap on what the lab does. I know a lot of us already have heard some of the CAT lab presentations, but we're an applied research and development transportation lab. We are associated with the University of Maryland. We were stood up in 2002. Uh, but what we focus on is developing software tools to solve transportation problems for national, state, and local clients. In terms of the composition of the team, we have a mix of programmers, IT, UX, customer service, and project managers. And it's about 50 FTEs. We also supplement our teams with students from the University of Maryland. So in terms of the data we work with, uh, we maintain and fuse about 300 data feeds, which results in about 7.5 billion data points a day. This is all done with our RITIS platform. RITIS is our automated dissemination, data share, and archiving system. So you can see here kind of how it works in the diagram. But we bring in these real-time data fuses. We make them available to our clients real-time. And we also archive them for analytics and reporting. So today's presentation will focus on that probe data source and then some of the analytics reporting for arterial performance monitoring. So here's the agenda for today. We'll start with just an overview of the XD probe data and some of the benefits. And then we'll move into a PennDOT use case and some Purdue visualizations. And then we'll wrap up with our demo of some of the tools available on Redis. So for those of you that aren't familiar with XD segments, they have two primary advantages versus your traditional TMCs. It's going to be increased network coverage and shorter segment lengths. So starting with increased network coverage, um, you can see the purple grid on the left, which represents Ingham County, Michigan, uh, represents the XD network, and the orange grid represents the TMC network. Uh, specifically within the city here of Lansing, Michigan, you can just see how much better the coverage is on some of the smaller roads. You also have more coverage within some of the rural areas. So overall, I believe it's about like a five to six fold in terms of the number of segments you're getting. In terms of shorter segment lengths, this example pulls some data from uh, I-79 in Pennsylvania, but overall what you see is the XD segment lengths are going to be smaller. Uh, in this case, they're half. What this means is if you look at this long TMC over here and compare it to kind of what you see over there in the XD segments, that's a six XD segments for one TMC. And what that means is you, you can have six travel times available to you for those segments versus just one, which is what you'd get with your TMCs. So in terms of the benefits, you can use XD data to assess the performance of quarters down at the intersection level. This can reduce cost and effort to collect signalized quarter and intersection information. It can be the basis of continuous monitoring studies. It can even replace some simulation models from the past. So now we'll move into the PennDOT use case and some of the Purdue visualizations. So PennDOT was interested in monitoring and comparing the arterial performance using a methodology that was developed by Purdue University and presented in TRB, I believe, in 2017. Uh, in this methodology, Purdue defined two metrics using probe data, which were travel time reliability and uh, congestion severity. So PennDOT was interested in applying these metrics to, its, uh, to a subset of its quarters, 138 supercritical quarters in the Philly area, uh, to kind of see what it what it looked like, what type of results they could get to see if it's something that could be useful to them. So a little bit about the methodology and types of visualizations that are key to it. It all starts with the cumulative distribution chart. So your cumulative distribution chart is going to be used to kind of assess your uh, congestion severity and your reliability. 
you have just your y-axis here, which is your cumulative frequency, your x-axis is your travel time, and one of the first things you'll see is your speed limit travel time. The speed limit travel time just represents how long it takes to traverse the segments by going the speed limit. It's kind of what you think. It's a vertical line, so it's theoretically, it, kind of the curve would be vertical if you were always going the speed limit theoretically, but it's not very realistic. You're more going to end up with some type of distribution like that. Um, so how you can interpret the chart is you're going to be looking for where the actual curve crosses the percentiles. Uh, so if you're looking at the 25th percentile here, you can kind of see where it's crossing the curve. And how you interpret it is you f figure out what that value is. In this case, it's 13.1 minutes. Uh, and then you know that that's the uppermost bound of the, the travel times at that percentile. So you can interpret it as 25% of the travel times are faster than that value. And you can do that for any of the percentiles within this diagram. So kind of how it works for congestion severity, you can take a time one and time two. Um, and you can look at the relative positions of the curves. So here you're looking at the same quarter. You're basically just comparing two time periods. And it's pretty obvious to see in this case, T1's always shifted to the left. Because it shifted to the left, that means you're going to have a lower travel time. T2's to the right, it's going to be worse in terms of the travel time. This is a pretty simplistic example just to kind of show it. The other measure that comes into play with the same chart is going to be your reliability measurement. And this is going to be related to your IQR, your interquartile range. Your IQR in statistics is really just the spread of your distribution. Um, in this case, it's your spread of your travel times. So what you do to calculate it is you take your 75th percentile, oh, wrong slide. Okay, sorry about that. You take your 75th percentile and you subtract your 25th percentile. That gives you your IQR value. Um, what it represents, is you want to basically minimize this number. You want an IQR that's small as possible because that'll mean more reliability. Another way to kind of look at it is going to be the slope of the curve from the 25th to the 75th percentile. If it's a steeper slope, that means your IQR is going to be smaller, which means it's more reliable. So kind of a quick way to kind of use the same chart to look at congestion severity and reliability. So here's another example of a time period one and time period two. Uh, in this case, you can see T2 is going faster up to about the 25th percentile, and then T1 or T2 gets slower when you get to the 75th percentile. So in terms of congestion severity, it differs in terms of which one's faster. But in terms of reliability in this example, you can see that T1's going to be steeper in that part of the curve between the 25th and the 75th percentile. That's going to give you a smaller IQR value, which means it's going to be more reliable. So in this case, you have difference in reliability and congestion just based on where you're in the curve. So in terms of an application and kind of use case for this, you can think about it as like a before and after study for signal retiming. So you can have your T1 be uh, your as is, your baseline period, and then you can have and schedule a retiming week. After the retiming week then, you can kind of do an after action review, maybe a couple weeks after. In this example, you can see that your T2 curve that your T2 curve is shifted to the left. That means that your congestion uh, and severity has decreased based on the signal retiming. Uh, in terms of your reliability, the slope of the curves are about the same. So reliability did not improve in this time, but your severity of your congestion did. And that would be the takeaway kind of from this study that was done. So kind of how the CAT lab got involved with Purdue University and PennDOT was that the use case and proof of concept went really well. They were real happy with it, what they saw, and they wanted to scale up. They wanted to cover their whole network, which was over 100,000 XD segments. And kind of being just the visualization and big data experts we are, we were going to help them kind of create some visualization tools that could scale to the size they needed. So now we'll kind of just demo the tools that we currently have available on the RIDIS platform. So there's going to be two tools. It's going to be your travel time comparison and your travel time delta ranking tool. We also have some enhancements currently under development. So in terms of your travel time comparisons, it's going to be similar to the visualizations we just saw. But the idea here is to either explore congestion and reliability across two parallel quarters or one quarter in both directions. And here you're going to do multiple t date ranges and time of day periods. So your date ranges will be your time one and your time two periods. So here's what the query page looks like. It's going to look like most of the other tools in PDA. Um, 
The first thing you do is you select your road. Uh, in this case, again, this example will highlight just a signal quarter in both directions. So you'll select US 30, eastbound and westbound. Then you'll select your days of the week. This is going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then the last thing you, sub you select is going to be your time periods. This is your T1 and your T2. So here you're comparing August versus September. You can also customize the, uh, the time of day selection. So if your signal retiming cycle plans have different hours versus the regular peak, you can customize them up to three periods. The default is always just going to be the peak periods on the tool. So once you kind of put in your parameters within the tool, you execute the query. And your output page is going to look like this. On the right hand side, you're going to see kind of the corridor and the various signal locations. On the left hand side, you're going to see the cumulative distribution charts. In this case, you're going to end up with four uh, cumulative distribution charts. This is because there's two directions and two time of days. So the curves themselves represent the T1 and T2. So August is going to be the red curve and blue curve is going to be September. Um, in this example, you can see that your August in terms of congestion severity across all four examples was always to the left, which means that congestion severity had decreased or was lower in August versus September. Um, in terms of reliability, uh, you can see that reliability is actually better in August as well. You can kind of see the gap between the two curves, between the 25th and the 75th percentile increasing. So that as the gap increases, it can kind of show you that the reliability will be better of August. So the other type of example you can have using this tool is going to be two parallel corridors. And in this case, we'll look at US 1 and US 13 going westbound. And the query page would be exactly the same as what you just saw. You would just select these uh, corridors. Um, we select three time periods, so it's basically just your uh, spring, summer, and winter. Uh, and in this example, you see that your winter is going to be generally more to the right, and your summer is going to be generally most to the left, across most of the curves, which is kind of what you'd expect in this type of example. But just another application of how you can use this to kind of even look at parallel routes. Within these tools, you can kind of hover over the curves. It might be difficult to kind of be like, oh, what's the actual difference? What are the actual numbers? There is mouse and over capabilities uh, that can kind of just spit out what the numbers are at a various percentile. You can do this anywhere in the curve. So the second tool we're going to talk about is going to be the travel time delta ranking. So mostly right now we've been talking about one quarter unless it was a parallel route. Uh, our tool can handle up to 12 quarters. But there's some modifications that need to be made to the methodology for this to work. So it all comes down to some normalization. On the top, you have two corridors with two different speed limit travel times. This is because likely there's just different lengths with each of the corridors. Look at the curve. You can't really, or the, at the chart, you can't really get much from it in terms of congestion and reliability. They're on different scales. You, there is no real conclusions you can draw from it. So you need a way to normalize it. So Purdue had come up with, for apples to apples comparison, to divide the travel times and the IQRs by the corresponding speed limit travel time. So this will put them both in percentage form. You can see here on the bottom um, that basically now your median travel time is going to be on the same scale and it makes it easy for comparison. So let's see how it kind of works. The numbers are pretty easy in terms of the division. It's just literally that median percentile divided by your speed limit travel time, and it's also going to be your IQR divided by the speed limit travel time. And in this case, you end up with 122% and 13.6%. So all of your quarters would ultimately end up in a percentage form. So where you can kind of visualize these percents is going to be what's known as a slope chart. So the slope chart on the y-axis is going to be your congestion percent, and your x-axis is going to be your reliability percent. Where you want to end up in the chart is going to be your bottom left. So you want, in terms of reliability, as low as possible, and the congestion as low as possible. And remember, reliability is IQR is percent of uh, speed limit travel time, so it's a small IQR is still what you're after, ultimately. So you want to end up in the bottom left. So how you can use this, then, is you can plot two quarters across the same time period. In this case, you have quarter one and quarter two. Quarter two is going to be shifted more to the bottom left, towards that kind of best area within the curve. What you can conclude here is that quarter two had better travel time and reliability than quarter one. For this, time, for this time period that you're looking at. What you can also do is similar to the travel time comparison tool. You can look at two time periods for the same quarter. Here you're looking more at the directionality of the arrow. So if it's pointing to the bottom left between time period one and time period two, that basically means that it's improving because it's going towards the lower reliability and con congestion. 
There's other directions that the arrows can point. Clearly, if they're both improving, that's what you're after, so that's kind of best case. If they both degrade, they're gonna go to the top right, and we'll represent that with red. And if they're mixed, you might have reliability increasing, congestion decreasing, or vice versa, and it's mixed results. But in this curve, really what you're focusing on is going to be the direction of the arrow, not necessarily where it's located in terms of what I'm showing right now. They can definitely be in different locations, more the trend in the direction. So kind of to give another example, here will be our query page within a PDA. And here we'll look at 12 quarters at once, and we'll do two time periods. So it'll be your spring and your summer time periods. You execute the query, and you end up with your travel time delta output ranking table. So this table provides an overview of all the kind of metrics we've been talking about thus far. So you have your travel time speed limit, you have your median before, after, and your delta, which again is gonna be your congestion severity, and you're gonna have your IQR before, after, and delta, which will be your reliability. Um, you can sort on any of these metrics and it'll basically just rank the order of the quarters in terms of that metric. Um, you can also see some of the colors within the table, between the deltas. You, those deltas are gonna represent, it's gonna be, if it's negative, it means it's improving. So uh, if it's red, it's gonna mean that it did not improve from T1 to T2. So another way to kind of look at these, we'll be going back to the slope chart. Um, you have end up in this example with about 10 out of the 12 quarters improving in both metrics and two that kind of have mixed results overall. Um, that what you saw in green in that previous table is exactly what you're seeing in green here. So we kind of follow those colors through and you can also see it on the map view of the quarters as well. So it kind of makes it very easy to kind of color code it and kind of see the same quarter over throughout the multiple visualizations. Um, we do also have another visualization, I believe, that's an option, which is a bar chart, which can kind of just show you the, an individual column across the multiple quarters. So in terms of kind of a more realistic example where things are changing, because that example, everything was basically improving, and the mixed results arrows in terms of directionality were pretty minimal. Uh, we can look at kind of an example where we have two degrading, four improving, and two with mixed results. And kind of what the takeaway we want to be for you guys today is if you have kind of mixed results and some degrading, some improving, you want to prioritize the quarters in red. Um, that's going to mean that they're degrading. Those are the ones you really want to look at for retirement efforts. Uh, in terms of which one's in red, it's really kind of up to the organization because they can be in different parts. There could just be a higher degrading period in terms of percent. Maybe it's just like a, it was performing very well in the beginning, then worse after, or it could just be normally bad and got a little worse. So it's kind of a prioritization effort that kind of will be done internally. Uh, but yeah, that's all I have for you today. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, thanks to Purdue University kind of for working with us and PennDOT on this project.